So who owns the COVID-19 vaccines that you paid to develop? Fascinating conversation. Check it out. Leave your comments. Ding the bell. Share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. Let's dig into vaccines, where they come from, how they're funded, who owns them, who should own them, who profits from them. Nick Dearden is on the line with us. He's the director of Global Justice Now. He's a regular contributor to The Guardian, the author of the book Trade Secrets, uh, also a founder of the UK's Stop Trump Coalition. Globaljustice.org.uk is the website. Nick Dearden, number 75. Uh, Nick Dearden 75 is his Twitter handle, as well as Global Justice UK. Nick, uh, I, who should own this? Co I, we, we've got now three COVID vaccines that are being promoted in the United States. I know Cuba has developed two of them that have been approved by the World Health Organization. China has developed one that's now got a WHO approval. Apparently Russia has as well. Um, uh, so this is happening all over the world. But speaking of the ones that are going to be sold into the American market, or arguably the British market, you know, uh, uh, the, the, you know where you're working, um, what's the story? How did these? How did these? How did these vaccines come about? Well, they really come about with an awful lot of public money. You know, I mean, the American government particularly has put huge amounts of money in. The British government and others have as well. But, you know, the problem is this money is put into big pharmaceutical corporations to go off and manufacture these things and, and charge, you know, whatever the market will bear for them. And, and that's how dysfunctional the big pharma industry is. We have this industry which is supposed to be about developing treatments to make us better and reduce suffering and death in the world. Um, but actually, they're completely driven um, by by the profits that they can make. And they have trade rules that, you know, agreed in a WTO, which allow them to monopolize um, the stuff that they've come up with, the medicines they've developed with public money for a minimum of 20 years into the future. And during that time, they can charge what they want. So, you know, in answer to your first question, I think these should be owned by the people of the world. I mean, we death, we all, whoever we are anywhere in the world, we need this stuff so that we can overcome this pandemic and we can make sure as few people as possible need to die from it and the suffering is, is ended. But unfortunately, because these vaccines and these treatments are in the hands of a bunch of corporations that can charge what they want and are primarily interested in what they're going to give to their shareholders at the end of the year, that's not the case. Um, and it's just a, it's just the most enormous problem that we face as humanity. So I would guess the response to what you just said, Nick Dearden, from um, an advocate for the American uh, and, and British uh, capitalist system would be, uh, well, we saw how well it worked out in the Soviet Union when the government took over the, the responsibility for, for the, the means of production, in this case, vaccine. Um, and it didn't work out all that well. Um, having companies operate based on a profit motive seems like, you know, a really rapid and efficient way to get things done. Um, are you suggesting that these companies should be put out of business or is there some sort of middle ground here where the government pays for the development, the government continues to hold the patent rather than giving the patent to the companies, licenses the companies to produce the vaccines and as part of that licensing process requires them to make a profit but a reasonable profit yeah i think that's absolutely right i mean you know there's no problem with the private sector necessarily developing aspects of these vaccines or treatments and manufacturing them um and and they could make you know back their costs and they could make a reasonable return on that but that's an entirely different thing from saying they have the monopoly to charge whatever they want for these for these treatments far into the future i mean you know that we um, develop when when when, when the, the, absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, you know, you heard the news about Moderna um, this week that's mm -hmm. had a, you know, a very positive breakthrough for its vaccine. I mean, that has been produced at the expense of the U.S. taxpayers almost entirely. I mean, U.S. taxpayers have paid for that almost entirely. Um, they have then had to buy. That was like two and a half billion from, dollars, too, wasn't it? huge amount, huge amount of money. Um, they then spent billions more buying these drugs off Moderna, and Moderna is still able to charge what it wants to sell any further drugs. And I mean, it looks at the moment like it's going to be the most expensive vaccine on the market. You're looking at about 
uh, $75 for a, for a single person to get vaccinated. That's, a, that's an awful lot of money in the United States. But can you even begin to imagine how much that, that, that represents to somebody living, you know, in one of the many developing countries on the planet? I mean, they're just not going to be able to get to get hold of this stuff. And it's even worse because actually those countries can't at the moment just go and manufacture those drugs themselves. We believe they should be allowed to, but there, there, there are these rules at an international level by which that would be illegal under, under international um, trade law. A matter of fact, a number of countries are going to the World Trade Organization tomorrow to, to, to argue that that law should be suspended for the period of the pandemic and they should be allowed to get the medicines to their people, um, which they so urgently um, so urgently need um, you know y- you mentioned the Soviet Union um, earlier but um, there's another example and that's the HIV AIDS crisis in in southern Africa in the mid 90s um, when millions of people died um, not because we didn't have the um, treatments um, that could have saved their lives, prolonged their lives and, and, and greatly reduced their suffering, but simply because the, the, the pharmaceutical corporations that were sitting on the patents for those drugs um, wouldn't uh, release them at a price that people could afford. Now, you know, that's, that's, that's a scandal to, um, to, 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 to compete against anything which, which, which happened in the Soviet Union, and that happened under this system. So we've really got to change. Um, we've really got to change this system. And make sure that it actually operates um, for the benefit of, of, of all of us. We all want healthy lives wherever we are in the planet. The public sector, the U.S. taxpayer and other taxpayers around the world are already paying for this stuff. There's absolutely no reason at all to hand it over um, to, to, to a small group of people to, to really profiteer from suffering. Yeah, these companies are absolute cash cows. This is not uh, a situation that is unique to the COVID virus uh, vaccine the, we're talking to Nick Dearden, the director of uh, Global Justice Now, uh, globaljustice.org.uk. Uh, is it not true that this is uh, pretty much right across the board with all vaccines and, and arguably with a lot of other drugs as well, um, pretty much the case that you and I, as taxpayers of the, of the United States, the United Kingdom, we pay for the development or the vast majority of the cost of development of actual new drugs the pharmaceutical companies love to brag about how much they spend on R&D, but most of that work is tweaking existing drugs so that they can be repatented and extend their, their, uh, their lock on the market for another 20 years. Um, you know, f- five different variations on Valium or Prozac or whatever. That's the kind of research that they do. Um, whereas, you know, we're paying for the development of actual vaccines. And then you go back and you look at like the Salk and the Sabin, Sabin vaccines for polio back in the day. Um, those were basically given to, 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 to government, and yet companies are still making profits off those vaccines. I mean, isn't this a, a, a system-wide pro- problem, not just a COVID vaccine problem? We have a minute to the break, Nick. You're completely right. And we were indeed working on this before COVID. And in, in many ways, it just proved uh, how important it, it, it was to campaign on these issues. And, you know, it's not even um, that, that they're producing the medicines that we need and charging too much. In many cases, they just don't have any incentive because they can't make enough profit from, from, from producing medicines that could massively reduce death in the world. I mean, antibiotics. Right? We're becoming resistant to antibiotics. Pharmaceutical corporations have done nothing to develop those antibiotics in the last 30 years because they're not profitable enough for them. Our entire medical system depends upon antibiotics. So they're really dysfunctional. And what these companies actually do in terms of their spending is give massive amount, buy back their stock to keep the price high and pay out dividends to shareholders. They spend far more on that than they do on research and development.